from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Uh, you know, uh, of course, from time to time, we realize that we haven't let the steam out of the pot. I've put a pot of boiling water on, put a lid on it. And the steam just threatens to blow that lid right off. That's where we're at right now. I can feel the anger. I can feel the residual complaining. I can feel the steam rising. And because I can, it's time for me to talk to the haters. The listeners who hate my guts. Many of them try to claim they're not even listeners. Many of them try to claim that they are, <laughs> you know, occasional, um, how do we call this? Kind of like uh, rubberneckers on the freeway looking at a traffic accident. Occasionally they just can't resist tuning in. And what I find amazing about the people who hate me is that they claim they never listen. Then they go on to say what I said yesterday and the day before yesterday and a week ago and a month ago. Then they talk about my website and my other business ventures and what have you. This is what they do. So you could say you hate me, boys and girls. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of you uh, like me a lot more than you can even admit to yourselves. Fascinating. So in this hour of the program, I'm going to show you why I've got the biggest brass balls in the broadcasting business. And I am also the Admiral of Alliteration. Because there's not a radio program on the air in any format, least of which talk radio, where the host agrees to spend the majority of his time in a particular hour talking to the people who hate him most much less all of his time. This makes life difficult for our Italian-American screener, Dean J. D'Amelio, because most of the people who call in are sycophants, lovers of what I do, lovers of my craft, and they call in to defend me, and we love you all to death. Thank you for that. But Dean has to screen them out because in this hour of the program, we just want to talk to the haters. The people who hate me, hate the show, hate what I stand for, hate the concept, hate my personality, you name it. And that's a lot of screening that Dean has to do. He hangs up on lots of people. Of course, he's in his glory during this hour. Getting to hang up on people? Are you kidding me? Oh. Nothing makes Dean happier than hanging up on people. But in this hour of the program, we say goodbye to all the fans. You can listen, of course. We say goodbye to all the lovers of the show, all of those who agree with me. Any of you who are in the target demographic who just love, love, love to tune in. And we open up the floor to people who hate my guts, hate the show, hate me, hate what I stand for, hate the fact that there are listeners who love what I do, love what I have to say. Some of you are just 
ripping mad, spitting nails, freaking out. Because Dean hangs up on so many people, it clears up a lot of open lines for just the kind of people we're looking for. The true Tom Likas haters. And we know you're out there. Some of you may know a hater with the uh, willpower to actually never tune in. Maybe they're not listening right now. Perhaps you'd like to call your friends and let them know that this is their opportunity to shine. This is their opportunity to show me up. This is their opportunity to tell me why they hate me. Now, I can tell you right now, Dean is hanging up on people like crazy, and all the phone lines are available in any given minute because he just keeps ripping through them. So call this toll-free telephone number right now, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You call me and tell me why you hate me, why you hate the show, what you hate. By the way, we have no interest in talking to you if you mildly dislike me or the show. Uh, if you occasionally disagree or sometimes I jerk your chain. No, no. This is true hatred. You have to be a hater to get on the air. You won't get on the air any other way. So if you're a true hater of me, a true hater of the show, a true hater of the concepts we espouse, our politics, our beliefs, a true hater of all of it, call 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. I guarantee, because Dean is hanging up on so many people, I guarantee if you're a hater, you're going to get right up. Because Dean is hanging up on the fans. This is not a setup hour. This is not an hour where people call in to tell me, yeah, I don't ask people, what's your opinion of the show? And there's people who love me and people that hate me, and the people who love me crowd out the people who hate me. No, no. Dean has to hang up on the people who love me and talk only to the people who hate me. If that's you, start dialing at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. But remember, this hour, I am only going to talk to the haters. Let's say hello to Lisa on the Tom Like His Show. Tom. Yes. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. Why not? Okay, so I, I, I but like, because I'm smart enough to get your shtick, you know? It's your shtick. I don't think that you totally believe everything you say. Like what? I think the guys that... What is it that I say? What it, We'll get to that. What is it that I say that I don't believe? Um, uh, pretty much the women hating thing. You probably love specifically. What have I said that I don't believe? I'd like to hear it. That you dislike women. That the nagging and the complaining and all. Oh, in actuality, I love nagging and complaining. I'm just lying about that on the air. Well, you you get a woman and you get the package, and we're not going to be thrilled with you sitting on the couch drinking the beers, being a slob. Well, guess what? I voted with my feet because if I loved it so much, I'd have a woman living with me right now, which I don't. Because you've had four, and they're never no, darling, darling. Now, first of all, I kicked, I I ended every one of those relationships. I kicked every one of them out the door, all of them, all of them. And Everyone I have, I it. have a, yes, and I have a zero tolerance policy for nagging, critiquing, complaining. Uh, that's it. If you repeat something to me more than once, I'm done. I'm out. Okay, well, I get that. But I think what we've got here is you're a, kind of a blowhard, you know, the, the, mm. the Dr. Phil who throws his opinion out there. And the guys that really do listen aren't very bright. The guys that have to. Oh, yes. The bright ones allow, uh, the bright ones tolerate your ball busting. Is that what you're saying? The guys that listen to your advice that don't have a brain of their own and decide whether you're whether they're going to keep. So you're saying the bright the bright guys the bright guys tolerate the ball busting of bitches like yourself. I I'm not a bitch. I'm really fun. I'm attractive. Sure you are. I am. 
I, I completely am. I'm 40 years old. I'm in great shape. I'm educated. I'm Says you. $100,000. And I listen to you, and I get furious. And then I say, you know what? It's just a game. It's a shtick. He gets the un, uneducated guys that don't know how to handle a relationship. And when they call and they get a wow moment from you, I just laugh. It, so it's in other like words, guys who, guys who can't stand your ball busting, these are guys who can't handle a relationship. I've been in many. I, I'm married. So and only I, an intelligent guy would that. tolerate your version of ball busting. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So in other words, if a guy isn't willing to have his balls busted, that means he's not intelligent. What I'm saying is if... Is that a yes or a no? Hmm. Guys, I would only date intelligent guys, so who would be with me? In other words, guys like your husband who don't mind your ball busting. Right. Right. I, and otherwise, in other words, anyone who will not tolerate your ball busting is not intelligent. I think the um, the people that were not as intelligent would still like me. Right. But the bottom line is the people who are not uh, interested in your ball busting, they're not intelligent. Only intelligent guys would tolerate your ball busting. I, everybody's got something to dish out. Your mother, your sister, you... Who do, who's not capable of... I have no interest in listening to it. You have no interest, but you do. And it's part no, of... No, I don't, I don't. No, so I don't. I don't. I don't. I live alone, and any time a woman starts with that, they get drop kicked through the uprights. <laughs> but the bottom line, what I think is... It, and I'm, not, a ver I'm a very intelligent marketing. person, and I would never tolerate any ball busting, and I can't be pussy whipped. You were, and you have been. Oh, but I ended it. You you know, more than I'm a hater of you, you're a hater of women because you've been burned. Or maybe you I don't hate women. women. I just use them for what they're good for, and that's maybe, all. Maybe it was jealousy. You can't expect, you a, you can't expect a turkey to fly, and so I will uh, certainly spend time with women, have sex with them, uh, maybe uh, hang out at a ball game or something. But as far as signing a contract to give them half of everything I have and let them move in and tell me all the things that are wrong with me all the time, no interest. Well, don't you think you'll be lonely? No. One lonely man. While the rest no. of us I have our nagging. No. Or, no. You know, somebody sitting next no. to me in old age. No. Mom gets old. Nope. Can't walk around. Nobody I've never been me. happy. I've been living alone now for years, and I've never been happier than I am now. Never. <laughs> well, Tom, maybe you turned me into a liker. <laughs> a likest liker. Uh, okay, well, if I could turn you into a likest liquor, that's how we get to the next step. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I'm talking to the haters. Carrie on the Tom Likest Show. Hello. Hi. Likest liquor. That's cute. How are you, Tom? Great. Lovely. All right. Well, I called in because I am one of those uh, Tom haters. Actually, I'm a former Tom Likas listener, and uh, I was switching through the channels and heard this, and wow, what a great opportunity to call you and tell you. So basically, I used to uh, – are you still there, Tom? No, I left the room. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you want to. Uh, no, I used to uh, listen to you and listen to a lot of advice. You know, uh, prior to listening and being a uh, Tom Likas student – I married a woman who had a um, a child, so I had a stepdaughter, and that caused a lot of friction within the relationship. Um, but, you know, further on down the line, you know, with those challenges, uh, I tuned into Tom Likas and took a lot of your advice, you know, on uh, love and marriage relationships and applied that to my marriage, and uh, my marriage failed terribly. Uh, due to that advice. Well, know, haven't I, I, haven't I told you on this program, haven't I told you that I don't pretend to be a marriage counselor and that my advice is not intended for people who want to have a happy marriage? Have you heard me say that many, many times? So you're not a marriage counselor? No. Or advisor? Okay, no. I understand. So, uh, so you took advice that I give to unmarried men who want to get laid, and you applied it to a marriage, something I told you not to do. And then when it didn't work out, you started hating me. Is that right? Yes. And, you know. Whose fault is that? 
Well, I don't know. Maybe you should put a little disclaimer at the end I of already, every show. Or no, no, because every listener is not as stupid as you are. I, I assume no. a no. level of intelligence on the part of the listener. I it's shouldn't have to repeat. I should not have to repeat the same things over and over. Do you feel you need to take accountability for things you say to other people, or is it just for entertainment purposes? Well, first of all, I uh, I do. I am accountable. This is why I give an hour for you to call in and uh, tell me what you think. Okay, so let me ask you this. Then. A single guy, you know, you're telling everyone just to go out and get laid and, you know, disregard marriage and the Institute, everything like that. Right. Um, well, let me finish, please. Institution. It, I'm sorry. Well, it was an institute in my... <laughs> an institute is, uh, is where you uh, go to do studies. Thank, thank you for the correction. Um, anyway, so getting this advice out to people, and let's say they just, you know, say, screw you women, I have no respect for you. I'm just going to go out and get laid. So the guys go out there, they get laid, they just sleep around with women, and actually they hurt the women uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. When did I ever advise people to hurt women physically? Ever. Name the day. Every time you talk about that, because they're invading... Name the, the day body. that I said hurt women physically. I want to know what day and time. Okay. You know what? You're right. So I guess that's dependent on someone's definition of sex. Um, how about emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? Emotionally, mentally, and spiritually what? Are you accountable when you tell everyone to run around and screw all these women and have no respect for Accountable them? how? I, I'm here. You can call in. You can tell what you think. If, if you don't agree, this is how I'm accountable. You can tell me you don't agree. You can tell me you think okay, I'm right. a creep. Go ahead. Okay, so someone takes your advice, goes out there, uses a condom, the condom breaks, and they end up with HIV. They're going to call you up and say, hey, Tom. They don't need me to tell. Them. By the way, I'm not on the air telling people to do anything they're not already doing. You are. You're encouraging No, people, I'm Tom. not. If you think this is a country full of prudes who are sitting at home uh, waiting to meet the woman of their dreams, and they're all going to be virgins when they get married, they're all going to be the 40-year-old virgin, uh, you're well, delusional. Land, but I, you also at the same time, you're you delusional. Why not encourage... Uh, um, relationships so now what you're encouraging is get married so you won't get hiv not because you're in love that. or care about the that. other that's person beside the point within your argument that's beside the point you I just said it that. you just no, said I did it not. yes you did way back the tape tom yes you did no, you brought up you're the one who brought up hiv you're the one who brought, 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 brought it up because you're an ignorant man i don't i'm not taking any responsibility if somebody's condom breaks no i'm not okay but you're the one that encouraged Go out and disrespect women, sleep with whoever you want, instead right. of actually pursuing a path of righteous taking and actually getting to know the person. Righteous? Is, right for this. is this a religious broadcast now? What has oh, it to do with righteousness? You know You're right. I, I forgot. You're atheist or agnostic or what are you? What's the difference? Like moron? This You're is right, not. This is not. This is not a Christian radio station. Okay, yeah. it's not. Well, I just want you to say something to your viewers and just admit it. Is this for entertainment purposes, or should they actually apply these lessons? Both. To their life? Both. 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 Okay, so that way you can sidestep any accountability and say, "Oh, that was just for entertainment purposes." Or, uh, hey, I am. A, you know how I'm accountable? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I have. I have the ultimate accountability when what I'm doing. When I when when I'm doing. No, you're going to hold on and wait for the response to what you just said. Because the, I have the ultimate accountability. If my show is not entertaining and useful to the large number of people out there, people will tune out. The ratings will go down, and I will go away. But I've been on the air now in Southern California for almost 20 years. So something about what I'm saying resonates with people. It rings true for an awful lot of folks. This is the number one radio program in Southern California among men. Number one. So there is something about what I'm saying that a Applies to and appeals to hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, the wrong way, buddy. You're leading them the wrong way. I'm accountable. When when they oh, find really? it, okay, so when they say, all agree with you, they'll all tune out, and even you're still listening. Okay. You know what? Like I said, I was flipping through my station, and I got an opportunity to call in and let you know how much I hate you. So if someone goes and steals your car, hey, that's okay, because they're happy. No, no it was wrong. it's not, because stealing what my car is illegal. you discuss... It's stealing my car is illegal. Tom, do you know what objective is? Stealing my car is illegal. Nothing I'm oh. recommending on this program is illegal. Nothing. <laughs> Actually, it depends on what state they're listening in, Tom. Really? Give me an example. Yeah. 
Well, Tom, Lycus or Lickming or whatever the heck you said to the girl, mm. that's actually illegal in Georgia. I don't know if you're broadcasting Georgia, but oral well, sex is actually illegal in that state. Well, we're not. And by the way, I didn't so say what, bo- uh, by the way, I didn't say what body part to lick. <laughs> you're right, buddy. Okay. I don't have no other arguments except for the fact that you, uh, you know, again, you're not claiming accountability in a way because you're saying, I, uh, well, that's okay. It's for entertainment purposes. Well, well now you're starting to repeat yourself and, uh, you know, you don't have no ability to uh, continue a conversation with new material, so I don't have no ability to continue listening. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I have never in my life heard a man who knew more about sex than you. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. I'm talking to the haters. At 1-800-5800-TOM. We do this every now and then. Beth Allen. On the Tom like his show. Helen. Hi. Tom? Hi. Yes. Are you there? No, I left the room. Oh, okay. Listen. I just started listening to your show not too long ago because my 18-year-old son told me he thought that was funny. Okay? Are you there? No, I left the room. Stop doing that, see? Okay. I actually have three teenage sons, and they're all in the dating age. And what I'm really concerned about is what, what you're actually saying to them. I don't want any girls to take advantage of my sons, but I certainly don't want my sons to grow up with a nasty attitude towards women. I mean, you know, that leads to women violence. It leads to... No one on this program has ever advocated violence. On the contrary, we've said exactly the opposite. No, you're telling guys to go out, get your rocks off, and don't worry about it, and, you know, never give out your sperm. What was that the other day? That's right. Never give it out. Never give it away. Okay, well, let me, what happened early on in your life to make you feel so crappy towards women? Well, you want your sons giving out their sperm and uh, ultimately giving out their uh, paychecks to women? Is that what you want? Hey, check to women. Hey, I have three great sons. I, w- I wouldn't have traded them for anything. So but you'd like I, them to knock I up women instead of using... Be- you'd like them to knock up women rather than using a condom? Absolutely not. My kids use condoms. So when I tell the guys not to give up their sperm, what do you think I'm saying? Well, you made it sound like women are trying to get their sperm to have... They are. And- they are. Look around you. They are. Maybe in your mind. No, that's happening, dear. That is happening. Well, I just, I find it just awful the way you talk about women. And then when you get a woman on the phone, you're rude. And you. I have every right to be rude. By the way, I'm rude to lots of people. But you're, why would you be rude to the people that actually are listening or calling? You? Do I need your advice? I've been doing this show for for fourteen years. Do I need your advice how to do it? I don't care how. Do you I do need that. your advice? Are you a radio program consultant? Do you have a degree in this area? Do you see how rude? Do you, you are know? Do you, you have any idea? Off. We're on the air, Grandma. Watch your mouth. Okay. For, for being a rude jerk. Right. I'm a rude jerk. I readily admit it. I'm an a-hole. I'm 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 a okay, bastard. So I'm a son in- of a bitch, and I'm proud of it. You are so proud of it, and I, that's what I find uh, just awful. I want. I, what I, I recommend it to your sons too because it works. Believe me, I raised my sons for the last eleven years because their dad. By the okay. way, hey, did I tell you to watch your mouth? The next time you say that word on the air, you're going to be hung up on. Okay. I apologize. Watch your mouth. You know what? You people who call in here and try to argue with me, you lose the argument immediately when you start cursing like a sailor. I'm not cursing at you. No, you're yelling, though. Doesn't matter. Cursing is illegal. It's a violation of the Federal Communication Commission regulations. You're right. You are not allowed to do that. I don't care how angry you are. You're not allowed to do it. I said I won't. So but you you me. said you wouldn't, and then you did it again. That's because, all right. I Watch your mouth, Grandma. <laughs> all 
I thought I was. I forgot I was on the radio. That's Where do you think we are having this conversation? Uh, I'm sitting in a parking lot in an Albertson so that I can have a conversation with you. Oh, you and think I, I'm not in the parking lot at Albertsons? I'm at the studio. The, of course I know that. See, that's why you you think women are so stupid. Well, you said you've said the word a hole three oh times now. Okay, I'm sure everyone in America has used that word, including my nine. I don't care if they've used it. You can't use it on the air. Do you understand the difference? You can't use it on the air. You can't use it on the air. Don't you? Do, I have every right to do whatever I want. This is my show. My name is on it, and I have the right to talk any way I want to anyone. And you have nothing. You have nothing to say about it. Nothing. Down. You didn't know that, right? I don't have to calm down. I'll do whatever the hell I want. This is my show. You are here. You serve. You serve at my pleasure. You are here only as long as I think you're interesting or grist for the mill, and then you're gone, Grandma. So don't be telling me how to do this program. Excuse me. Huh? Grandma. As far as, as far as you know. Uh, no, I do now. No, you don't. No, you don't. Well, yeah, I do, but whatever. No, you really I mean, don't. Why would you say that? Because any one of your sons could have had an accident. Well, um, because my sons and I talk about everything and we're honest with each other, we don't have problems like that. They may not know that they knocked somebody up. Okay. See, why do you, why do you think... That you can interrupt and yell at women. Because I'm number one. You're num But where in your head did you get that? Where, I, why do you think I didn't get it from one? my head. I got it from Arbitron. I'm number one. Number one at what? Number one radio program in the afternoon among men. Number one. Um, <laughs> but... If you, have you ever heard your show? It's indisputable. It doesn't matter. It's number one with men. Whatever slop I'm putting on the air, it made me number one. And it drives you crazy, too, doesn't it? It does drive me crazy because if you had an intelligent woman to have an argument with, I have news. Well, well you that's my point. Well, well, I'll tell you what. When one calls in, when one calls in, I'll put her on the air. But I haven't heard her voice yet. Oh. And that includes this call. Well, that you know, that's that's okay. Whatever. I I just can't stand the fact that we would allow someone like you on our radio. But there's I'm on because I'm number one. <laughs> You're number one today. But there's going. To be I've been number one many place. times over the years, and by the way, I've been in the top five for years and years. Well, I. I've been in California my whole life. Never heard of you until the, until. The That's life. because you're not in the target demographic, but your sons have heard of me. I've got control of your sons. I don't need you. You don't have control. Actually, of your I do. Sons. Actually, yeah. I do. No, you don't. Yeah. Uh, do they listen? Uh, they listen, but if they take your advice, we sit and laugh at you. Oh, sure you do. And uh, if your sons are getting laid, trust me, they're using my tactics and my techniques. <laughs> Oh, and what's that? Take women for everything they've got, use them until they're used up and get rid of them? Well, taking them for everything they've got is a waste of time because women don't save or invest anyway. Uh, but certainly, than, than certainly than riding now. them over the speed bumps and then kicking them through the uprights when you're done with them, that, that would be pretty much what I advocate, yes. <laughs> well, do you think women should do that for men? They already do. It's called divorce, dear. Oh, please. What's and by the way, you know? by the way, let's talk about that ex-husband of yours. Uh, what, what, what is it that you said? What is uh, What were the uh, adjectives used to describe him? Um, I'm not going to use that adjective because it's not allowed on the radio. We'll just say a-hole, okay? No, uh, he's a cheater. He was a cheater right. and a liar from the beginning. And, and and who chose to marry a cheater and a liar? And the answer is he you. He was a cheater and a liar. Oh. He just, he just got so, You want to know something? He just got sober. Uh, 20 years ago, and 10 years after we've been divorced, he decides to tell me he was a cheater. Mm. Now, I see, so you married an alcoholic, is that right? Yes. Right, that was a good move on your case, in your case, Ace. <laughs> no kidding, didn't know he was an alcoholic, was married for like You couldn't years. tell. Huh? You couldn't tell. Um, it was back in the 80s, I think everybody... Oh, yeah, way back in the 80s, nobody could tell somebody was an alcoholic. 
Uh, well, we were all partying together, put it that way. Oh, there we go. So you had no problem with him back then. I'm, I don't have a problem with him being an alcoholic now because he's been sober. What I have a problem with is him giving me his his guilt trip now after 10 years that, yeah, he was the one who cheated and ruined the marriage. And Why does that give you a guilt that? trip? That, and you feel guilty about that? Well, I, I felt like I had done something in the marriage to mess up the marriage. And for 10 years, I felt guilty until he did his inventory and decides to tell me, you know, that I cheated. Not once, not twice, but several times. Oh, well, look at that. So that AA made him go back and apologize to everybody. Yeah, but you're not supposed to do, you know, it's been 10 years, whatever. I just don't want my sons to grow up thinking women are, you know... All that. Sperm depositories? No, but they are. Sperm depositories, you know, whatever. I want, I want them to have, I don't, I want when a girl says no, they understand what no means, you know? Well, nobody here ever advocated rape, ever. I well, that last guy was a little weird, but. The way you get them to say yes is by chipping away at their self esteem until <laughs> they give you everything you want. You don't, have, you don't want yes. women to say no, you want them to say yes. How could you I just that? did. You beat a woman down, you chip away at her self-esteem. Right. You Never. No means no. The idea is to chip away at her self-esteem until she says yes. How, why not treat a woman with kindness and... Because they step on you with both and, heels when you do you that. And still get yes. Because they step on you with both of their stiletto heels when you do that. Yeah, but if you if you treat them like crap, you think that you think that women like that, and they, it doesn't matter want. if they like it. They give you what we want, which is sex. Well, how do you know you're not being used for sex? How does how does a guy Darling, know I, 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 any woman, any hot chicks out there want to use me for sex? My office number here. You can call me here at three two three nine seven one nine seven one zero. If you want to use me for sex, I am here to be used. To me, okay. Um, oh, really? No. See, what you want is you know what you want. You want a good you want a good hard crack in your ass, and you know what? I've got an open palm with your name on it. You got a palm on it. You know I, what? If my palm that, is ready, ready to go. go. You do? I, I'm, I don't go without. Uh, you've right? never, oh, really? So you really? like a good crack in the ass? Is that what you like? I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna answer that. Well, it's pretty, you don't have to answer it, Grandma. It's pretty clear. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's my boy, Tom Likas. Hey, I waited on hold all this time to hear that I'm loving the sex. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm talking to the haters. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Danielle, hello. Hi Tom. Hi. So I've been listening. I don't know why. You're right. It is totally like a train wreck. But I've been listening every day on my way home from work for like the last month, and I just am fascinated and infuriated by you. First of all, I want to know how this double standard thing works. Which one? Well, all of them, Tom. I mean, you talk about how women are unintelligent and blah, 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 blah. Well, like, that they don't take care. Like, fat women, you don't want to have anything to do with them. Or, you know, you have to be a certain weight for your height. And all of this stuff has to be proportionate. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of your listeners aren't that attractive and don't keep their bodies up and stuff. So why is it okay for men but not okay for women? I'm not talking about whether it's okay for men. All I'm saying is that in most cases, men are paying most of the bills. We have to ask you out. We have to pay for the drink. We have to pay for dinner. We have to pick you up in our car, pay for the gas. If we marry you, we end up having to pay the majority of the rent, the majority of the mortgage, the majority of the utilities. We end up having to pay for your clothes, your student loans, your bad car loans. We end up having to pay for everything you buy. We have to support you. We have to uh, lay out cashola for you in every possible way. You owe it to us to look better than we do. You know, I don't think that's true, though, either, Tom, because the last, like, five or six days I've been on, I paid half. And I know what you're going to say. You might be the exception to the rule. But that's correct. Like everybody calling in is the exception to the rule. So but because, that dear, we've got eight phone lines, and this is, a this is a country of 300 million people. 
The exceptions to the rule are the first ones to get up off their couch and call in. I don't think that's true, Tom. I think that you're... Dear, I've been doing this my whole life. as much credit as they deserve. Darling, how many women have you dated? I haven't dated any women. Trust me, they expect men to pay. Are there exceptions? Sure. Uh, You know, again, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Yes, but I'm saying a person who has 20 female friends, and out of those female friends, most all of them... You know, pay for half their rent and their car payment. And no, half they don't pay half, dear. Job. They don't. They don't. You think they do, but you haven't lived with any of these women. They don't pay half. They might pay something, but they don't pay half. It's like women who say, well, he doesn't pay for everything. You know, every few times I pay for dinner, that's not paying half. No, that's not true, Tom. And as far as... Darling, the- you have no experience in this. I do have experience in this. So you've dated women. Woman, you have dated women. Friends. So you have dated. No, dear, your friends are like you. How many women have you dated and gotten them to pay half? Well, the I answer is not. But my point is, Tom, it seems so like you have no experience. That's calling you is the exception to the rule. Well, that they must not. Be As the I said, there are eight phone lines and 350 million people in the country. So that means the, the the eight people who are the exceptions call in, and the other three hundred and forty nine million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety two people. Sit on their couch and listen. Well, the, the point is they can't get through because those eight phone lines all filled up. The exceptions are the ones who call. Right, but we're the, all the ones that get through are exceptions. It's no, dear, because no, because who's going to call up and go? That's right. I make my boyfriend pay for everything. Who's going to say that? I guess that's true. I just feel like the things that you say are, are so infuriating. And to an intelligent woman, it, it really kind of hurts because it's like we work so hard to come up with half of things. And uh, I don't know, maybe most women don't have full-time jobs, but I certainly do and most of the people I know do. So it, it's just, I don't know, it's infuriating to me that... This this perception of women that's being pumped out of your... your well, your because, uh, again, I, as I always say on this program, but it's a waste of breath, that there's exceptions to every rule, but not enough to build your life around them. Okay, well, what about this firm depository thing? That is the most awful thing I've ever heard anybody... Why? Say. Because women aren't trash. Like, uh, you can't... Well, you are a sperm depository. There's no doubt about that. These guys who are listening to your show... Like the more, the more and more people you have listening, like I, I know you have some worshipers, Tom. Like there's, there's so many young boys who just absolutely worship you and adore you. And the more that this, this lifestyle, or you say that sex isn't a lifestyle, whatever, the more people who use women, like. Hey, watch your mouth. Don't you hear me talking about people cursing on this program? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. It just. You can't do that. I know. I'm sorry. But the more that. The more that people listen to your show and act on the things that you're telling them to do, like I said, there's just going to be a lot of socially retarded, like, introverted, messed up women out there. Oh, you don't think we already have much of messed up women as it is? Well, yeah, but it's it's just being perpetuated and perpetuated. Well, what's like, a who, man's who, job to cultivate women? Is that what it is? Who's going to procreate? Like, who... <sighs> Oh, the, the 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 poor and the stupid. They were already doing a great job keeping up with the, the breeding. But don't you think that you should be telling men to look for women who are self-reliant and who have jobs and things like that so that... We no, can... they should look for women who put out. But then all we're going to have is these retarded women uh, and poor people who who don't have the intelligence or know-how or... I'm an intelligent, wealthy man. I have no interest in procreating. Leave that to the poor and the dumb. Yeah, but then our world is just, like, oh, it's already so inundated. Like, you go to the DMV and there's just a bunch of retards and people who don't wear deodorant. Who else else wants to work at the DMV? It's just going to get worse and worse is all I'm saying. Nothing, there's a select few of people who will benefit from the kind of things that you're teaching, and the rest of things are just going to turn to crap. The select few are the people who tune in, and they're lucky enough to be part of the club and to get the information, and then to use it. Well, 
whatever, Tom. I, I hope that you have a great night and you get someone who, who can actually carry an argument with you because, like I was telling my friend before I called in, that you have this hypnotic quality. And even if there is something worth saying when you call in, it just, I don't know, the point gets lost. And it's so frustrating to hear. And I'm trying to argue along with these women who call in and it just never works out. And you are good at what you do, but it's infuriating, and I think that you're peddling the wrong message. And it's it's infuriating that I'm good at what I do. What a way to end the hour. The Tom Likas Show.